Classical mechanics is the first physics taught to school kids, and many YouTube videos use it for quick explanations. It's simple and intuitive because it uses the object and force paradigm that fits with the human experience of muscles and weights. In the first week of high school physics, students learn Newton's famous formula, F equals MA. Force equals mass times acceleration is good enough to calculate the orbits of planets and the trajectories of baseballs, but it's cumbersome for many real-world problems like the motion of bicycles or waves. For many problems, it's easier to work with an equivalent set of equations that were invented by William Hamilton in the early 1800s. Hamilton's method de-emphasizes force and acceleration in favor of energy and momentum. The easiest way to understand it is by a specific example. Say you want to describe the motion of a cannonball shot across a field. Boom. With Newton's method, you would begin by writing the force on the cannonball. But with Hamilton's method, you would begin by writing a formula for the total energy of the cannonball as a function of its momentum and height above the ground. The letter H is used Boom. for the energy because Hamilton wanted to be famous and because E was already taken. Pop. P is used for momentum because Boom. M is used for mass. Y is the height above the ground, and G is the gravitational constant. Pop. Remember from your high school physics that kinetic energy Boom. is momentum squared over twice the mass, and potential energy from gravity is a constant G times the height above the Pop. ground. Because this is a learning video, I mm. want to rewrite the formula in terms of a complete set of coordinates, x, y, and z, and the momentum in all three directions, Pop. p sub x, p sub y, and p sub z. Now Hamilton's method says you don't have to use x, mm. y, and z for the coordinates. You can pick a set of coordinates convenient for the problem. For instance, with wheels, the angular oh. position would be logical. Once you choose a convenient set of coordinates, then Hamilton's method specifies how to select the momenta that correspond to those coordinates. Because you don't have to use x, y, and z, the method can greatly simplify motion problems. The coordinates that you do select are called generalized coordinates, and the letter q is used for them. The corresponding momenta are still called p but have integer subscripts, instead of x, y, and z. The trick is to pick a set of p's and q's that give a simple equation for the energy, h, which is usually called the Hamiltonian. Once you do that, you can solve for how the system moves in time with Hamilton's equations. Here they are. If the q's are regular Cartesian coordinates, x, y, and z, and the p's are linear momenta in the x, y, and z directions, then Hamilton's method reduces to Newton's method, and the equations are equivalent to F equals MA. Even though it came from classical mechanics, Hamilton's method is usually described in the first chapter of books on quantum mechanics. Quantum physicists almost never refer to force and acceleration. It's always energy and momentum. The important thing you need to know from this is if you can express the energy in terms of a convenient set of coordinates, called generalized coordinates, then Hamilton's equations will tell you how the system evolves with time. That's the background information from classical mechanics. Watch the next video to get the background information from statistical physics.